Well, hello there and welcome to another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. And today we're going to be covering another interesting fighter airplane. In fact, perhaps the best fighter ever designed that was never built. Someone could argue with me on that, but this is one that there's a lot of people that felt that this airplane should have gone into production, and that is the F-20, the Tiger Shark. Now, Greg is giving me a very amused look behind the counter because, really? Really? Today, I, I, I could be a, a watermelon or a, a pickle, I think. A watermelon, okay. Summertime watermelon, we'll toss that off camera. Another good catch by the Kenny. So, <clears throat> the... F-20, now it may look familiar, and we're kind of, you know, skirting along Top Gun here. I'll give you a plan view of the aircraft. Looks a lot like an F-5, doesn't it, Greg? Looks a lot like an F-5. Um, it, But it's actually a much brawnier airplane. It was actually born out of 1975 with the F-5E of the Tiger II. Uh, project and then they were upgunning that and they they decided that they wanted under the FX program which was the export version of the uh, fighter program for the United States at that time in the Cold War and we're standing in front of our Cold War timeline here how apropos the United States was exporting to our client states we had this kind of uh, bipolar world where you had the Russians on one side and the United States and the other, and we were arming our allies, both sides were, and the idea was that the Soviets at that time were giving a lot of support in the MiG-21 range. We've talked about MiG-21 before, uh, North Vietnam had a bunch of them, but they were arming a lot of the, uh, their client states with fairly advanced fighters. So the overall idea behind the FX program was this kind of rearming of uh, our client states with comparable aircraft that could be comparable to a MiG-21. At that point, we didn't have a lot in the inventory. The other idea was they did not want a complete technology transfer. Uh, in other words, to give our client states our weapons exactly with our fire control radars and everything else because of the experience with uh, South Vietnam and South Vietnam falling and so much Western equipment falling into the hands of the North Vietnamese, which then gets sent back and torn apart to be reverse engineered by theoretically your enemies. So the idea was to come up with an export fighter that was fairly good, that was comparable to our aircraft but just a little bit below. You like that, Greg? Just a little bit below. Greg today is my, my Swaciferous assistant. I think I got that pretty close. Uh, but the uh, my Swaciferous assistant, uh, I could not have you exporting fighters that were as good as my fighters, right? So that was the idea. Um, but the idea was the F-20 would be faster than the F-5E, the Tiger II. It would have better avionics, and it would be have beyond visual range air-to-air uh, -air capability. In other words, it could attack aircraft beyond visual range. Now, make no mistake about it, this aircraft was just a street fighter. It was designed to be an air control or air superiority airplane. It had hard points, which we'll talk about in a second, but it was designed strictly as a fighter. Now, the primary aircraft that it was up against was the F-16, specifically the Block 10, for you aficionados at home, the Block 10 F-16 and export. And that was just a little bit less than, than our aircraft. But you could see, compared to the F-16, a stubbier aircraft, so to speak, in my view, a little stubbier aircraft, did not have that big, beautiful, uh, riding in a recliner 
couch seat in the front. It, and there was a, a narrower canopy, but it had some interesting things. It had a GE 404 engine. You know where that engine came from, Greg? That was the Hornet and the F-117 engine. So it had a GE 404. It was fast, pretty fast at Mach 2.0, or about 1,300 miles an hour. And it had a GE APG-67 radar to give it that over-the-horizon uh, ability, kill ability. So it was pretty, pretty cool. Now, there were problems with it, and Greg can throw up some pictures of the airplane. One of the challenges was it had limited ground clearance when it was on the ground. So for the hard points, being able to get things in underneath it on those hard points were a real problem. So that, that was an is, um, a, a problem. And it had, because of that, it had limited hard, port, hard point loading options. I'm gonna get that one out, Greg. And, and that was a hard one. So the hard points were a little bit different. The other thing was um, the wing, they changed the wing. Uh, I don't want to get too far into this, but the way the wing was set up was it had improved lift at a high angle of attack. And we've talked about uh, aircraft before with a cord running through it and, you know, angle of attack is the pitch of the airplane. The, um, it had improved lift at a high angle of attack but when you got it down in level flight, it actually, the wing design, the lift on the wing fell off and it actually impeded it. So, so it was not without its problems. Now they made three of these bad boys. You can believe that. The first flight of the F-20 was in 1982 and Russ Scott was the pilot. Uh, as I said, it was a derivative from the F-5. Two of the three prototypes were lost in crashes, if you could believe that or not. So it did have some interesting challenges, even with all its attributes, which I actually really like this airplane. I think this is a very cool airplane. Now, I want to go ahead and move over to my salute today, and that is for anyone that was involved in this program. Remember I talked about moving the ball. This moved the ball. And why did it move the ball? It moved the ball because anybody that was competing in that competition had to up their game a little bit, even with the F-16 and the follow-on fighters. Remember, this aircraft was developed in the mid-1980s with all that other stuff going on, with uh, improvements in the F-16, improvements in the F-15, and a lot of other developments happening. So the this airplane really moved the ball with Northrop it was a it was a game changer, and I do think that uh, it did have not only some impact on the way the United States exported their fighters, but the fighters that were built after it. So if you were involved in the F-20 Tiger Shark team, if you're out there, you are my salute. And today, we're going to come up with delicious boots beverage. I don't have I don't know that we've ever had boots on before. I don't think so. This is a coconut cream soda. Ooh. Made with pure cane sugar. So I I always say they got the memo. That's that is a marketing memo number 1 for sugar or for um for these uh drinks. A Belleville, Texas. If you live Bell in Belleville, Texas, give us a shout. Uh 170 calories. So it has all the normal stuff uh let's see some of that stuff you've been giving me lately greg i'm looking for a uh it doesn't have a california cash refund certificate which means it's not two or three years old greg intent all right so we're going to go ahead and pop this open and as i said if you were involved at northrop on the f20 program you were cutting edge and you move the ball, and you move the ball in aviation, and we can never forget that we just keep standing on all the people that went before us. I salute you. You're on a roll, man. <laughs> oh, 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 Greg. Maybe I could get like one in three that is this is 
This obligatory second. Yeah, you're looking at me. I know. Mm. You know, it's cold. It it looked fresh. It had all the potential. Just not there. Not not my taste. Cream soda obviously is not my my taste. So the program eventually they just realized that and there there was a real rigmarole with this airplane a congressional investigation a lot of other stuff going on about how it was exported um ultimately northrop felt in a technical term that they got screwed on the program that they really felt that they they were not treated well in the program but they were working on the b2 at the time and the b2 was coming and so they weren't going to destroy the relationship with the government uh, over this particular, which was essentially an export fighter, they weren't gonna gonna push it. So the airplane um, uh, moved into history. Now, uh, how serious was it for Northrop? Northrop lost 1.2 billion dollars on this program, and this, by the way, I think was the, one of the last privately funded. Uh, fighter aircraft developments in, in procurement. In other words, Northrop funded this one and uh, uh, they lost a lot of money on this program. So the aircraft continued a little bit of testing. As I said, two of the three prototypes were lost and, and scarily, uh, uh, on a scary note, both pilots were lost in, in the aircraft, which is rather sad. Um, the last aircraft is on loan at the California Science Center. That'd be a cool airplane to get if they ever decide. If you're at the California Science Center and you, you no longer want that airplane, give us a shout. We'll, we'll be happy to take it off your hands. Um, the comparable airplanes of the period in this were the HAL, the Tejas, the T-E-J-A-S, Tejas, the JF-17 Thunder, and of course, that Block 10 F-16. Those are comparable aircraft. Uh, and as I said, it has the moniker of the best fighter that was never went in that never went into production. So it went on into history. Now we have an amazing opportunity for you today. Greg has gone all out in the hat department. We have, and these are our new logo. So we've got our new logo going on there. It's summer. They're vented. They're very nice, and they have the plastic back. So go out to our website, click on one of these handy dandy hats, and you too could have the uh, new Palm Springs logoed hat just in time for summer. So my name is Fred Bell. Now, if you came across us on YouTube, all we do is long form military aircraft videos. We'd love to have you a subscriber, subscribe to the channel, give us a like and a comment. We would be uh, very pleased if you would do that and follow us. If you're on Facebook, give us a like, give us a comment. If you like what we do here in the little section there, we have a donation option. You can click on that. We cannot do all of this without your donations. We surely appreciate that. And if you're an educator, we have our education guidelines included uh, with this video. You can teach your kids or if you're homeschooling teach them about flight about a historic event you click on the link and download those we'd love for you uh, to be able to take advantage of that opportunity my name is fred bell i am the vice chairman of the palm springs air museum thank you so much have a great day